Hey traders, checking in on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space. ETH stealing the spotlight right now at all-time highs. A lot of other altcoins seeing a lot of strength as well. And Bitcoin overall keeping its strength as we have Michael Saylor right now talking as I speak, giving his presentation hopefully to a lot of people with deep pockets as far as putting Bitcoin on their balance sheets. And yes, this is a robe underneath a cardigan. Let's talk about charts. So first things first, we're looking at the dollar. The dollar bulls are getting a bit of follow through on their little inverse head and shoulders and the bounce is underway. So now we zoom out and the question is, are we going to be able to change the weekly trend bullish from here once we top out? First, we need to know where do we top out? How much space is created for the weekly higher low to try and form? One good thing for asset bulls is that the S&P 500 has been all bull all week. This is the third day of the week. And the cryptocurrency space is holding on just fine as well. So we are seeing some of our assets disregard the dollar. Now, some people are going to look at that and say, ah, oh, there's no correlation. But those of us who watch correlations on a daily basis know they constantly come and go. And what that tells us is that is a bullish indication because all that means is if the bulls in crypto and stocks are not being inhibited by dollar strength, it can only help the asset bulls if we then see a dollar pullback from here. So continuing to keep an eye on it, but pretty much best case start to the week as far as dollar follow through, not having any negative impact. So Bitcoin, solid green day. Last we checked in, the bulls needed a four hour trend change to indicate that our daily higher low had been established. And we had it here with that four hour trend change. So yes, our daily higher low is set at 32.2K. And now we're looking at our key resistance of 38.6K, which is the Elon Musk top. Right now, like I said, Michael Saylor is talking to a lot of people that control a lot of money. And it's not going to be the kind of catalyst, in my opinion, that's an instantaneous catalyst. It's going to be something that potentially helps the weekly bull flag confirm new all-time highs. If we see people take his advice and over the next couple of weeks or the next month, they start buying in, whether they're adding Bitcoin to their company's balance sheets or personally adding, whatever the reason, obviously any buying pressure is beneficial for the bulls. So from here, the daily higher lows are the most important thing for me. We've got key resistance up at 38.6K, as I said. And if that level breaks, we know that the odds only increase for the weekly bull flag. The Musk pump definitely increased the odds of a weekly bull flag, and those odds are staying elevated because it's a weekly bull flag. And again, we are $5,000 from an all-time high, and we are $9,000 from a bear break, leading to further weekly consolidation. So bulls are very strong. We have the four-hour uptrend to be watching as a short-term guide. Anything above 35.5K here, and I'm just rounding, but anything above 35.5 is a four-hour higher low. If we lose the four-hour uptrend from here, it's going to be a daily lower high compared to 38.6K. So that's a key resistance level to be watching. If we reject from that level, myself and a lot of bulls will be buying any daily consolidation, playing off of 32.2K and looking for a daily higher low. So very nice move for the Bitcoin bulls, creating a lot of space for that higher low and alleviating fear because there was some fear that was created by the magnitude of the pullback of that pump and that dropped to the lower low. So I personally, at this point, I've got my no touch positions. I've got my core swing position on Bitcoin. And if I'm going to do any adding, it's going to be on daily consolidation. Honestly, we are in a market environment right now that is unlike anything I've ever seen just across the board in general. And I've talked in the past how it was a beautiful setup where we had cryptocurrency all time highs into Canadian MJ all time highs to allow for focus and compounding gains. Market's not giving us th that this time around. Look at APHA. Look at these daily charts on Canadian MJ. They are going nuts while 
Cryptocurrency is going nuts. This is the USMJ space. This is the ETF. Just absolute bull moves. And I personally am having a hard time focusing on where I'm... I'm well, I shouldn't say... I'm, it's a good problem to have. There are too many opportunities. So in 2017, all my gains were crypto. In 2018, all my gains were Canadian MJ. In 2019, it was mostly stocks. In 2020, it was maybe two thirds stocks and a third crypto. And here in 2021, I've got about 55% stocks and 45% crypto. So it's more balanced than it has ever been because the opportunity is matched more than it ever has been since I've been trading over the last four years in the cryptocurrency space. So again, it's a good problem to have. And I'm, I'm like I said, I'm at my annual goal here in the first 34 days of, of the year, but it's, it's leading to me missing opportunities as I'll point out on ETH here. So we know what we're watching for on Bitcoin. The dominance chart on Bitcoin does remain weak. And that is because ETH is stealing the spotlight here in blue sky breakout. So we are in a clear daily downtrend we are still looking for a weekly higher low because anything above 60, 80 is a weekly higher low. And again, if that is going to happen, in my opinion, it would be ETH perhaps getting its all-time high run, hitting a top, consolidating, and then maybe we see Bitcoin hit an all-time high. In the video right before Musk came out and posted on Twitter, I said the two ways, in my opinion, that we're going to see a weekly bounce on this dominance chart would be if Musk came out and said something or would be Bitcoin surging to all-time highs and confirming the weekly bull flag. We got that Musk pump, but there was no follow-through behind it, so that was not enough to give us a weekly higher low. So now, in my opinion, it would be reliant on Bitcoin bulls surging over 42,000, making their way up to the upper 40,000 range to see a weekly bounce, keeping in mind that even when we do see a weekly bounce, we will just be looking for a weekly lower high to be the result of that bounce on the dominance chart. So ETH, congrats to the bulls. Massive move, massive follow through. There were some people looking at this as a rising wedge and there's nothing wrong with that. It did, it did have a bit of a rising wedge feel just because every bull break was not getting much follow through. But keep in mind when you're watching a rising wedge that you have to have the bears prove it. And for the bears to prove it, you have to lose the higher lows. So it's okay to be watching a pattern. It's okay to take a little bit off the table to be protective against a pattern, but we never lost the daily higher lows on ETH, 1039, another one at 1206, and most recently another one at 1271, keeping the daily uptrend going, and now we're getting some follow through. So where are we looking at for short-term targets here? A lot of people look at FIB retracement, or I should say FIB extension levels for their targets, but for me, it's this 12-hour channel that I've been watching for what feels like a very long time. It's just a nice channel. I was viewing it more as a channel than a wedge, but here we are coming up to this resistance and that's going to be in the 1650, 16, well, 1660 to 1690 range. We're due for 12 hour consolidation. Again, RSI levels go out the window as being helpful, showing us overextended moves when we are in blue sky breakout. But if I were in a shorter term position, I would be scaling out into this strength, looking for that rejection from this resistance and looking for even just brief healthy consolidation leading for, or coming from a temporary top. So I'm going to keep watching this 12 hour channel as long as it is in play because of how many times it has come into play over the last five weeks. ETH BTC heading up to resistance. If we reject from the, this resistance, it is a daily equilibrium. So that would be a possibility and something to be watching for as well. If that is a daily lower high and we start pulling back, maybe that means the Bitcoin bulls start to gain a bit of ground as ETH consolidates a little bit. But overall, this is, again, a very strong chart maintaining the daily uptrend. This pullback was more than the bulls wanted to see, but it was a daily higher low. So was this. And here we are testing that resistance, trying to keep this ETH BTC chart in full control of the bulls, keeping in mind, remember we were watching this two-month long-term inverse head and shoulders for the potential of if it did break, the lack of resistance above it. And the bulls are still enjoying that lack of resistance here. So we can always see another leg up on this ETH BTC chart, as long as the daily higher lows remain intact. So this is where I became a little bit overwhelmed because ETH right now, I am only benefiting from my long-term no touch position. And again, I'm not complaining because my net worth is going up with ETH here, but there is some gains left on the table because 
Yesterday, I was day trading stocks, a lot going on in stock market world, but I was watching this rejection here and I did make an attempt. I wanted to all in a break of 1500 and I would look to exit half of that position being all in pretty quickly to essentially what I would like to do is be all in on a 1500 break, put my or exit half of my position at 1520 and then my break evens 1480 and I can let the trade follow through a lot further from there because my break even is then a lot more comfortable. So I made an attempt here where I went all in, but because it's me going all in, I have to be real protective and have a real tight stop. So I ended up stopping out when 489 broke for the potential that it was a double top and that the bears would get any significant follow through. And obviously in hindsight, we didn't, but because I was being extra aggressive with position size, I had to keep the stop tight. In hindsight, if I wasn't going all in, if I was just using maybe a, a third or half of my capital, I could have had a lot more wiggle room and I would have made the gains. So definitely a little bit of a learning lesson there as far as patience, smaller positions, things like that. We eventually did get the bull break. Why didn't I just put a stop by over 1500? Because the last thing I would want to do is stop by into a big position if I were distracted or not at the computer or yada, yada. So first five minute oversold conditions, back burner trade. How did that go? Perfect. Massive drop, five minute oversold. And we got pretty extended, significant bounce. Well, not that significant, just 1% plus, but the double bottom, there's your confidence right there. Break of the five minute lower high. And from that point on, we've obviously run very far. So when I'm playing first five minute oversold, if I'm looking for the move to see continuation, and if I'm looking for first five minute oversold, just to give us an hourly higher low, Let's say I enter at 1520, or maybe maybe my scaling average is, is 1520, and I sell half at 1530, I can then put my stop under the low at that point, and again, let the half position ride out risk-free, which obviously would have worked out as well. Where was I at that point in time? Sleeping like a baby, 3 a.m. So again, you better believe in 2017, I am awake and trading that oversold bounce at three in the morning, not this time around. Congrats to the bulls. Plenty of space for an hourly higher low. EMA 12, great guide. Look how long it's been holding. Every hourly consolidation right off that EMA 12. That's been the case for the last 24 plus hours. When we lose the hourly uptrend, anything above 15, 15 will be a four hour higher low. When we lose the four hour uptrend, I'll like, I like this 12 hour chart and we'll look for a 12 hour higher low with plenty of space for it. Link. So link, doesn't link look a lot like ETH? You bet your bottom dollar it does. Daily higher low established at 2165 and testing the all time high right now. One thing that stands out here, the link BTC pairing has to break bull, have to get a bull move over 722 here because if we were our strongest right now, the link BTC chart would be up here, testing this resistance. Again, these strongest altcoin moves are when you are tick for tick correlated with the US dollar and the Bitcoin pairing. Anything less than tick for tick correlation is less than ideal scenario. So right now, Link has a less than ideal scenario. That doesn't mean that the bulls can't save it here with a, again, a confirmed little daily higher low and higher high to be heading back to that resistance, but they need to do so. And we're gonna be watching for that shift. Let's see if profits from ETH recognize that Link is the exact same setup and then pile into Link for its all time high move. Four hour higher low on link, anything above 2363 and daily higher low, anything above 2165. There's a lot of euphoria in the space. You have to recognize that. And it's warranted because, you know, ETH is blue sky and Bitcoin's a weekly bull flag just under blue sky. But again, we got to keep that in check and recognize it in ourselves and stick to our game plans as always. Don't get lazy with stop losses just because the space is in such a bull market. And that's it. ADA. USDT, significant bull break, had a nice little daily equilibrium. The bull break took place there at 369. Big follow through started on Monday and it's been continuing. Four hour tightening range here, a little higher low at 413 and 415. We do have a double top at the moment. Got to be keeping an eye on that. If we reject from 455 here and break 413, it's a short term red flag for that loss of support. So I know what the US dollar pairing looks like. What does the Bitcoin pairing look like? A little bit more consolidation, 
but I like the fact that it broke bullish as well from its sideways daily range. So it is definitely correlated to the US dollar version and it's a little bit weaker over the last 24 hours, but correlated enough in the sense that we have this bull break and we're just looking for a daily higher low. ADA USD has the bull break. We're not looking for the daily higher low yet, but no red flags on that pairing at this point. Uni USD, this is just a slow, steady move up, getting a little bit extended. Bulls tiring, it appears. Got to be cautious of a rising wedge here as well. And I'm going to be watching where even if we do break 2075, if we don't get any follow through, then that's when that rising wedge narrative remains in play. So we'll keep an eye on this. Anything above 1805 is a higher low. Daily chart, again, very strong, but a lack of any meaningful daily consolidation since we've gone almost 200%. So we know that means be a bit cautious, be a bit protective of, of gains. When you go 200%, daily consolidation probably isn't too far away. Uni BTC, correlated. Looks just fine as far as the correlation to the US dollar pairing. So looking at it on the four hour perspective, very similar. One difference is this bounce is not as strong as the US dollar pairing. Keep an eye on it. This is a head and shoulders here. And if this head and shoulders confirms, that likely will lead to uni USD seeing daily consolidation. And again, just comparing these four hour time frames, we can see that the US dollar pairing is a lot stronger. And again, it doesn't mean it's not a reason to sell or anything like that. If you're in uni USD, it's going up. You're making profit. It's just something to be paying attention to, to say, okay, maybe, maybe the BTC pairing going bearish is a signal for me to take some more profit in my US dollar position. Binance USDT finally getting the all-time high. I've been talking about it, looking for it to be a laggard for a while, just because it is such a, a popular altcoin that has been a leader of the sector in the past and was not doing anything on this Bitcoin pairing chart and is now doing something. Weekly bounce is clearly underway. So we know we're just looking for a weekly lower high and the size of this daily consolidation is fairly notable. And again, that stands out as a red flag because right now, we're coming right off the all-time high. It's a daily inside bar, but I can see we are clearly seeing Binance weaken comparatively to Bitcoin over the last two days. So it is an all-time high. We're in a tightening range. Short-term key support. Look at these little stair steps, 49.15, 49.60, 49.78. When we lose these four-hour higher lows, we zoom out and look for a daily higher low. Anybody coming off the all-time high, we can watch for backburner trades. We'll keep an eye on first hourly oversold conditions as we scout daily higher lows. That goes for ETH as well. That's your anti-FOMO trade. If you missed the break of 1500 on ETH, your five-minute oversold entry at 1550 is your anti-FOMO entry that has way better risk and reward of making an entry chasing a bull move that has already taken place. Binance BTC is looking for a daily higher low, but again, the pullback is more significant than the bulls would like to see at this point in combination with the fact that we know we're just watching for a weekly lower high to be the most likely scenario on this bounce. Just a bit of caution when our Bitcoin pairings show weakness relative to our altcoin US dollar pairings. So that's where we stand overall. Bulls get a big fat congratulations. And what I care about in the short term over the next 24 hours is can Bitcoin keep the four-hour uptrend and break 38.6K? If it does, that probability needle, which is already at about 80% for a weekly bull flag, is going to kick up to 85%. And if we lose the four-hour uptrend without breaking that level, daily equilibrium, and there will be bulls looking to buy daily higher lows. I hope you are well. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to do good things out there. Spread the bullish cheer, and we'll see you soon. just drop a PayPal. Daniel says, do good things and dropped a hundred dollars. What the heck? What the heck in hoo -ba -ba? Daniel, thank you for the hundred dollars. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, you know, I'm going to take that hundred dollars and I'm going to help pay for the repair of EJ's hearing. Um, EJ, I would like to like, if you, if you cut your ears off, you let me know. I'm going to send you some money because I know you're going to need some band-aids for your ear, my friend. I don't want you going Van Gogh style, baby. Daniel, thank you for the harm, Jack.
Daniel, thank you for 